Today we're going to be tearing down what's probably my favorite phone so far this year, the Z Flip 3. Normally when we do a tear down on a folding phone it doesn't survive because the folding plastic screen isn't as durable as glass screens. But this time around I think it'd be fun to try to keep it alive even if it doesn't actually happen. Fun little side note, I will be getting my next shipment of Jerry Rig knives. I know the supply shortages have affected everyone across the board, including these. So if you're looking to snag one for yourself or give away one for Christmas, I will leave a link down in the video description. And as soon as they arrive, I will ship them out with stamps.com. Huge thanks to stamps.com for sponsoring this video. I use stamps.com for all of my shipping because it brings the services of the United States Postal Service and UPS right to my computer. So if you regularly send letters or packages for your business or side hustle, like me, it only takes a few minutes to get set up. And since 1998, over 1 million businesses like mine have been using stamps.com. It's just nice not to have to stand in line at the post office, and I can ship everything I need to from my own computer. You can quickly compare carriers to get the best rates with Stamps.com's new Rate Advisor tool, and then I can just drop off my packages or schedule a pickup. Pretty simple. No lines or traffic. To get your free four-week trial, free postage, discounted shipping, and a free five-pound digital scale, just head to stamps.com slash jerryrig, and I'll leave a link down in the description. There are no long-term commitments or contracts, so it's a win-win for everyone. That link is down in the description, stamps.com slash jerryrig, and now it's time to see if the Galaxy Fold 3 can survive an autopsy. Let's get started. The goal here, this time around, is to have a working Galaxy Flip 3 after it gets 100% entirely disassembled, which means we're also removing that flexible screen. We've never ended up with a working folding phone after a teardown, because in the past there was always something new and exciting on the screen hardware to check out, but this time around it's worth a shot, even if the attempt might be futile. We'll start from the back this time around with my heat gun. And also, not sure when this happened, but my camera lens has cracked at some point between my durability test and now. Maybe one of the bins stressed out the lens enough to crack? I'm not really sure, because it definitely hasn't been dropped. The lower glass is easy enough to remove. I did, however, forget that the top glass had a full screen underneath. And I did nick that with my pry tool as I was slicing the adhesive off from around the edges but it looks like things are still working, even if that display is a little dinged. The camera is still working even when the display is separated from the body. Kinda trippy. I'll get everything turned off again and we can press forward with a little more caution. The smaller rear LCD is attached to the Flip 3 with its own Lego style ribbon connector. And interestingly enough, the black and colored halves of the Flip 3 are actually one solid piece of glass. For some reason I thought they would be two. So far, things are looking good. I'll remove the two screws holding down the metal plate over the upper battery connection. Then I can unplug that battery, just like a little Lego, and we can move down to the bottom half of the phone, which has the wireless charger. Its connectors are held in place by another metal bracket with two more screws. The wireless coil can then be removed, and the lower, larger battery can be unplugged. The Flip 3 does have 5G, with two of its little millimeter wave antennas tucked into the side rail and another near the hinge. The funny thing about technology is that the more it improves, the crazier people get who don't understand how it works, while of course they're still using it. People are saying the same things about 5G as they said about 4G and 3G. But the truth is, as long as you aren't sticking your head in a microwave, you'll be just fine. Where was I? Oh yeah, the balls. Inside the loudspeaker, we have the same foam sound dampening balls that we find in most high-end cell phones, including the iPhones. There is no waterproofing on the unit itself, but there is some down on the frame that I'll show you in a second. I can unclip the folding display ribbon, and then down here are those little ingress protection screens to help keep the water out of the loudspeaker and microphone holes. The Flip 3 is IPX8 water resistant, just like the Fold. To get the battery out, Samsung is still making things difficult with permanently glued in batteries. This is annoying for multiple reasons, but mainly because it makes the phone much more difficult to recycle at the end of its lifespan. 
As of now, lithium batteries are 95% recyclable, but with each additional removal process, the likelihood of it actually getting recycled goes down. All 2,370 milliamp hours of it. The charging port does separate from its ribbon cable, it's plugged in on the underside, and it's got a red rubber ring around the opening. The upper motherboard has several extension ribbons going through the hinge, along with six more silver screws holding down the top plastics. But even after getting all those screws out, there is still something holding the motherboard in place. Ah yes, my old nemesis, the SIM card tray. Finally, with the motherboard out, we can see the top 12 megapixel ultra-wide camera up top, with no optical image stabilization. Then we have the main 12 megapixel camera right below that which does have DOIS, and both of these cameras can be disconnected from the motherboard with their LEGO-style connectors. There is another battery in the top half of the phone. I imagine that this battery is less out of convenience and more there to balance out the weight of the two halves, since having one half of the phone entirely made for batteries would throw the balance out of whack. So Samsung put this 930 milliamp hour capacity battery in the top half, so it doesn't yeet itself to the ground with each unfolding. With everything out of the phone, the only thing we have left to do is remove the foldable dynamic 120Hz AMOLED with HDR10 Plus and 1200 nits. I might be stalling a bit, but check out this waterproofing along the ribbons inside the hinge. The top portion has a red rubberish sealant, while the bottom hinge has more of a gray color. Kinda cool that Samsung's being all color coordinated on the inside. Okay, fine, let's do it. I feel like this is a slow motion murder, but we can't tell when it actually dies since the screen is off. Luckily for us, the plastic bezel that protects the edge of the screen is relatively easy to pop off. As we know from previous fold teardowns, an accidental poke to the side of the screen will kill it. Samsung has included a metal plate along the back side of the display, which hopefully should allow us to lift up on the pixels without damaging them. And I can take special care as we pry along the screen so that once we reach the bottom, we won't damage the screen ribbon cable as we pull it out from the frame. The screen is much less floppy than I anticipated. It naturally just wants to sit at this slightly kinked angle. Along where it rests on the hinge, there are still metal slats integrated into the display. We've seen these on previous versions of the Fold. And unfortunately, it looks like we might have inflicted some damage along the bottom edge of the screen. But fingers crossed it might just be the black protective covering on top. It looks like it's been torn a little by the adhesive. Before we find out how murdered the phone is though, let's take a look at the internal hinge. Peeling back the adhesive liner exposes the complex inner workings of the multi-positional masterpiece. Once again, I'm mostly stalling. You should leave your survival predictions down in the comments. I can pretend that the phone is still alive as long as I don't actually check its vital signs. Personally, I give it about a negative 12% chance of surviving with how fragile that screen is. With the battery back in place, along with the charge port and bottom loudspeaker, we can move up to the top battery. I'll slide the motherboard back into its slot and plug in the extension ribbons. The final plastics are in place, along with the sneaky SIM card tray. And last but not least, the metal brackets that keep all the connectors connected. I'll plug in the rear display, press the power button, and would you look at that? Success. Both screens are still functioning, and the phone is powered on. Basically, pretty much just like new. Maybe slightly used. It's kind of been through a lot, but, you know, we don't judge. I'm very surprised it's still functioning. Obviously though, the easiest way to see the insides of your phone from the outsides is with one of my teardown skins. The Fold 3 is quite honestly one of the best looking teardown skins of all time, especially with the copper wireless charging pad. It doesn't get much more futuristic than that. Maybe it is, you know, still a little floppy, but I consider this an absolute win. Nice work, Samsung. And nice work myself. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Come hang out with me on Instagram and Twitter. And thanks a ton for watching. I'll see you around.